What's up, everybody? It's Jason McIntyre here with Rick Buecher, a special NBA playoff edition. Rick, f- tremendous game last night between yeah. Portland and OKC. Damian Lillard ends the game with a 37-foot step back three. I love the decision. Uh, Paul George took a shot at it. Yeah. Your thoughts on the shot? Was it a good shot or a bad shot to end the game? It was a bad shot. Oh. That's a bad shot. Oh, boy. No, no, no. 37 feet. A lot. Obviously, it's a better shot for Logo Lillard than it is yes. for most other guys. Are you going to start that? Is that going to be a hashtag now? No, logo no, no. Lillard? That's actually something I was told he, it had already been established because oh. he'd hit a number of shots yes. from that spot. So it wasn't the first time that he took it. And what I, what I appreciate, appreciate about it is that it was a reason. There was thought that went into taking it. It wasn't just a bailout, I've got nothing, what the hell, I'll just hoist it. He knew that through the course of that game, he had been attacking the rim, hadn't always been able to finish, was getting bumped physically, they weren't making the calls. So he looked at it and said, it's a tie game. I, I have this shot in my bag. I'm not going to get the call. I can't expect to get the call. And so I'm going to go ahead and take something that I know I've made before. Uh, Not just before. Five for five in the series beyond 30 feet. For the season, 37%. I think it's a good shot. Again, I like your logic with the they're going to foul him and he's not going to get the call. Yeah. I'm surprised OKC didn't do something differently defensively. Damian's had 47. Forced the ball out of his hands. No, but I'll let anybody else beat me. 37 feet away from the basket. You can't double a guy that far away. They have too many other guys who can score. You don't need a three. Yeah. Instead of him taking a 30, look, if you're asking me, do I let Lillard take a, and by the way, step, step sideways. Back. James Harden. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I, there was so much wrong with that shot. It wasn't even straight. Russ Westbrook takes more technically oh, correct shots than what that shot was. Stepping sideways, falling back, hitting it. Good on him that he made it. Uh, it says a lot about him. It's also a reflection of the fact that um, he knew coming off of last year when they got beat by the Pelicans oh, geez, yeah. that going up against big guards and had Paul George on him, that he needed to expand the floor for himself. Like a Steph Curry type Both player. he and yeah. CJ. Exactly. Because of the size, if he's playing from 26 feet in, now you can double him. Yeah. Now you can trap the ball out of his hands. Now you can smother him and make him shoot over you. From 37 feet, there's no, like, I'm glad nobody said Paul George, he, well, he should have closed out harder or whatever. 37 feet, you can't yeah. close out that hard in that situation. I, I'll say this. He opened the series. There's a clip floating around social media. His first shot within the first 20 seconds of the series was a three from the logo, yeah. and he made it to start the series. Yeah. Pretty incredible. All right, let's move on to the next question. Rick, does this series, and I know it's just four, five games, does it cement Damian Lillard as a top 10 player in the NBA? No. I mean, as of, for anybody as of right now, yes. In prisoners Prisoner of, of the moment. Prisoners yes. of the moment? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Throw him in your top 10. He's a top 10 player. You know what? He's the best point guard I've ever seen. He's amazing. All right, Rick, 20 second time. Hold on. A lot of people are going to vote him as second team all NBA point guard, right? Yeah. Uh, that would put him in the top 10. If, if you're looking at Curry and Harden as the first team, Kyrie and Dame as the second team. No, I'd, no, because it's position. It's position. He can That's be fair. he can be the third or fourth best guard point or guard. point guard, and not necessarily be a top okay, ten I'll player. I'll press you, especially on it. especially because if you look, if you're looking at guys like Kevin Durant and Kawhi Automatic. and Giannis, and you've got okay. any number of point forwards that are going to be in that top. So 10. let's quickly rattle through it. Okay, okay. Giannis, we both have top ten. James yes. Harden, top ten. Yes. Kevin Durant. To- oh, top ten. Yes. Steph Curry. Yes. LeBron. Yes. Okay, so that's five. Yes. Kawhi Leonard? Let's put him to the Ooh, side right now. Ooh. Okay, I have him top ten. Uh, uh, you know what? I take that back. Put him in. in. Go ahead. Put him Kyrie in. Kyrie Irving would be seven. Put him in. Okay. Now we're getting down to what I think is the tough area. Yes. Paul George is probably going to be the he's third. In. He's okay, in. he's in. Good. He's in. Joel Embiid. I have him in. Oh, you taking Joel in. Embiid to build your team around over Damian Lillard? I know it's simply kind of a different question, it, but in a guard wing league, 
Yes, but there's so much that Joel Embiid can do. He can, he has range. My greatest concern about building around Joel Embiid, and somehow, how did we go from our top ten to guys that we would build around? Or are we yeah, saying? Yeah, okay. Well, that's I what mean, top ten. There's is. a distinction because yeah, no, no, that's because good. this is the thing that that Philadelphia is going to have to face. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid cannot co- coexist on a championship team. We agree on yeah. that, right? You're going to have to make a decision between those two. Yeah. If it's talent. There's no question. Joel Embiid is the guy that I keep, and I move Ben Simmons. But there's, but a, fa- there's, there's a big there's but the, there. There's yeah. the health factor. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Joel Embiid, for his age, the fact that he's already sitting out games with sore knees and a sore back. like you can't do back-to-back seasons like his fifth year in the league. Exactly. Yeah. Can I count on that? So, But if it's just a matter of talent, when you're the best player at your position – and he is, when healthy, the best player Ooh. at his position. Uh, I think I hear somebody at the door. Anthony Davis is knocking. What? Wants to know how first you do all, not have three-time All-NBA first-team player, Anthony Davis, who a year ago, first-team All-NBA, first-team All-Defense, and now Anthony Davis because he missed like 26 games. He's chopped liver ring. Oh, wait a minute. How, which year are we talking about that he missed 26 we're, games? Because he's year, missed, a lot, he has missed a lot of games, games and a lot of seasons. He's had some injury issues. You've Anthony got to have him top 10. No, I've always had this issue with Ant- AD is not in my top 10. AD really? Is, AD might not be in my top 15. I am not. All right. All right. Do we have look, to stop down here? No, I mean, no, no, come look, on. Anthony talent, Davis is not top 15. Talent wise, and this is kind of the distinction when we get into the Damian Lillard conversation, because there are so many intangibles that Damian brings to the table. His leadership, his, his dedication to the trailblazers and I know that yeah. sounds no, kind of quaint that's important right now. but the fact of the matter is like he's brought that team together and this goes back to his AAU days he was on the Oakland Rebels they were the team that wasn't sponsored they were the team that had to have bake sales and sell beef jerky <laughs> and they had to do all kinds of things to scrounge up the money to go to tournaments the Oakland Soldiers were the team they were the big that, team. Yes, they yes. were the Nike sponsored team. LeBron came in and played for remember them. Remember Leon Powell? Uh, po, yes, po, uh, yes, yeah, I remember yes. him covering high school basketball back in the exactly. day. Exactly. Now, Damian will tell you the soldiers didn't want him. <laughs> the soldiers will say, no, Damian could have come played for us, but he didn't want to. Nobody wanted He went bottom, to Weaver State, yeah. Bottom line is he stayed with the Rebels, yeah. and they eventually played a tournament where they beat the soldiers. He stayed with the group of his friends that he grew up playing with. And he's always had that mentality that, you know what, if I stay with, if I stay loyal, if we stay together, our continuity and our dedication to each other will trump pure talent. So what we saw and what we've seen with these trailblazers is Mm -hmm. something that Damian Lillard has basically built his entire career on. And... That's where that's one of those intangibles that when yeah. you get to the NBA, it's still about yeah. talent. You it's can't quantify about, that, really. Yeah, the but physicality. That's about all those. Let me things. add one quick note. So I do have Dame top ten. I would take him over Kawhi Leonard right now. I think he's got that killer mentality at the end of games. Well, you think Kawhi doesn't? I don't know that he does. He played with the Spurs, where he was second banana to Tim Duncan. He played I, with the greatest coach. Mm-hmm. I need to see what he does in the Sixer series. I'm discounting the Orlando Magic, who tried to defend him with Jonathan Isaac well, he's gonna, and he's Aaron gonna, Gordon. Like, no. The, the Jimmy first, Butler, Kawhi Leonard is going to be a show next round. I like Butler a lot. The first I would put round, him in contention for top 10, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, the first round matchups. I mean, you're also going to see, you're probably going to see uh, Kawhi Leonard on Ben Simmons yes. a great deal. And Kawhi Leonard has fun. eaten Ben Simmons' lunch. No, ben Simmons is 22, Rick. Right? Come on, let's, I, I'm a big Simmons guy. But, uh, wait, one but, last that's, but see, that's, but that's, where, that's where Kawhi is good. Kawhi is good as a, he's a great two-way player. My concern with him is not that he's not a closer. I think he's happy to have the ball at the end and take the shot. It's that does he make everybody better? Is he a playmaker? Mm. Or is he really kind of an isolationist Mm. where if I tell him to stop this guy, he can stop that guy. If I tell him to go score on this guy, he can score on this guy. But if I ask him to blend what you're doing with the rest of the team, can he do that? Because he started his career as a blender in San Antonio. Let, Let me just remind everybody, Anthony Davis, a year ago at this time, yes. swept Damian Lillard out. Now, he had help from Holiday. Oh, wait, 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 w
we have a problem playing yeah. against big guards. I mean, let's be honest. I am not giving that series to AD. AD I, I was mean, not the I, difference maker. I the stats in, fact, in front this of me. Holiday year, was tremendous. This was. year, you know who the best player on that team was, even when AD was there? Mm. You know who it was. Mm. You know who it Julie, was. Don't tell me you're going to say Julius Randle. Okay. <laughs> no, no, Just no, make no. it sure. No. Okay. Mr. Holiday. Yeah. Yes. He was, he was phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. He was at the end of games. You talk about being a closer. Okay. That's my problem with AD. AD, right. talent-wise, I would agree with you. Is he a top 10 talent? Yes, because he's a great two-way player athletically. But he, I'm putting him in that Tracy yeah. McGrady camp of a guy who is a phenomenal talent as a basketball player. What is he, 26? But at this point, he still doesn't know to, right. how to yeah, apply I can see it. the headlines now. Rick Buger. Anthony Davis is not a top 15 player. Oof. That's a good one. All right, let's move on to the next one, Rick. Uh, okay, see, we'll put a button on the uh, Thunder season. Paul George turns 29 in May, Russell Westbrook 31 in November. Yeah. Thunder have a lot of soul searching to do. Uh, mm. I think the second highest luxury tax in the league. Can't, mm. Not a lot of wiggle room. What do you do? Do you try to trade Russell Westbrook, and does anybody want that salary? I don't think you trade Paul George. Your thoughts on where the Thunder go from here? No chance, no way that they trade either one of those guys. Let's not forget it is Oklahoma City. Yeah. And the ability to sign superstar players to long-term contracts is the exception, not the rule. They were able to do that. You also have two superstars in Russ and Paul George who are compatible. Yeah, but do they play well together? I think they can play well together. Look, For stretches, think, Russell Westbrook can become a sharer. I know he's a great assist man. He can become a distributor and seed to Paul George for parts. But I, for a full season and a, a couple rounds in the playoffs, I don't know that this tandem's ever going to get out of the first round. Rick. He was, oh, I, 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 I fully believe that they have that capability. Russ does have to change. But I saw Russ change from last year. Russ... The last time you saw him last year was against the Utah Jazz when he scored, what, 45 points on 43 shots. He, it was the battering ram Russ Westbrook. I saw a different Russ Westbrook this year. Paul George doesn't become an MVP candidate if Russ Westbrook is not willing to take a back seat. Now, Paul George got hurt, and then Russ took over again. I can't fault okay. him for that. I will go to game five, fourth quarter, leading by 15. Yes. About eight, nine minutes left. Yes. Russ down the stretch. He had a couple big shots late third, early fourth. Down the stretch, he misses a layup with 20 seconds left. Yes. Couple turnovers, couple missed jumpers. Yeah. He didn't have confidence in his jumpers. He's deferring to Schroeder. For sure. For I, sure. I mean, what? A, I, okay, I, but, some, now, but some, you're, you're, you're arguing both ways. Like, he doesn't defer. He doesn't play with others. But Schroeder is on fire from three, and he's giving him the ball, and now we're going to criticize him for that. I can't do that. And by the way, he's a, he's a Paul George, Max guy. PG got the ball plenty PG of times two free throws. in those last five, six minutes. They hit any one of those. Okay, so who it are we was, blaming? Where's the blame game? Billy Donovan, let's get him out of town. Steven Adams, we got to blame him. No, no. Well, they, they didn't have Andre Roberson. Because that's what I'm hearing out here on the, when I turn on the TV or radio. Blame Russ Westbrook's psychiatrist or the one <laughs> or the one that he hasn't hired yet. Because ultimately that's if Russ plays with the poise and blending his game with everybody else the way he did last night, he does that for the entire series. He does that all year long. Then they're not the sixth seed. And they've had some practice under pressure situations of operating that way. Yeah. It's just he he suddenly faced elimination, and he decided, you know what? I got to stop all this rage thing. I just got to be focused it's on what? the job at hand. Damian shot Lillard has been focusing on that approach for years. Russ shot 36% for the series. All right, let's move on, Rick. Next question. So nine free agents on this list. We're trying to do tiers of free agents. Yeah. We'll go through them. A couple are layups. We won't spend any time. Can yeah. they be a number one and alpha on a championship team? Yes. Or a number two or a three? Kevin Durant, get that out of the way easily. Well, Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard have both demonstrated that yeah. they can be the best player okay. on a championship team. So you put them there. I would also put Kyrie Irving on, on that tier. One, because I think Boston's going to win it this year. I'm Ooh. still saying that, Ooh. in spite of them trying to prove me wrong all year long. For the regular season, yeah. And he does have a championship to his name where he hit the biggest shot yep. and, he, and he played a big role. So has Kyrie fully earned that status? Anybody who wants to say not quite yet, I'm with you. 
I believe that he can. So I'm going to put him in that category. No disagreement there. Now where it gets a little tricky, yes. guys like Clay Thompson, yep. Jimmy Butler, Kemba Walker. Are they all twos? Is Clay more of a three? Uh, can Jimmy Butler be a one as he was in Chicago when he had some great showdowns with LeBron in the East? Yeah. Who do you want? I'll let you go first. Who do you want to start with? Uh, Clay Thompson I, it can be a two. He can be okay. the second best player on, on the right team. I believe in many ways, if you look at the Warriors pre, uh, pre-KD, he was essentially that. Yes, Draymond Green played a big role. Harrison uh, Barnes. Andre Iguodala, <laughs> uh, Sean Livingston. It was yeah. a collection. Yes. But on that team, Clay Thompson demonstrated in the postseason, oh, we need to get a game with our backs against the wall. He did it against Oklahoma City. So Clay's a two. Jimmy Butler, who was maybe a two in Minnesota. I know him and Andrew Wiggins in a bit of a turf war. I don't know who the two is to your guy, Joel Embiid, in Philly. Yeah. I mean, is it Tobias Harris who we'll get to shortly? I personally am a big Jimmy Butler fan. I think I cannot wait for the Kawhi Leonard showdown. I have Butler as a two, Rick. So I have originally, when I'm looking at my list, and I went through this, I had Clay, Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, Kemba Walker, all on that second level. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, and I don't know, championship, but if you you took Kemba Walker and you had him play with LeBron James, I think he could be a poor man's Kyrie Irving. Mm. I think he has that potential. Okay. But to be honest, if I really look at this, it's KD, Kawhi, Kyrie on the first level, Mm -hmm. Clay Thompson on the second level, and then I'm not sure that I can put anybody else on that second level. Because Butler doesn't shoot it well enough, maybe? Well, and what has he done? I mean, in Chicago, he was their number one. Okay, he was their number one. He couldn't get by prime LeBron. Well, and and if it wasn't for Rajon Rondo, they're not even doing what they did. fair. So... I don't know that Jimmy has earned that status. Tobias Harris, I like a lot. I think, he, I think both Jimmy and Tobias have the capability Ooh. of being that. But have they proved to me that they are that? Clay Thompson has proved to Proof, me. Yeah. Those guys, they still need to show me. Yeah. So Tobias, you have on the same level as Jimmy Butler. I put them in sort of the same category. Yes. Okay. All right, Kemba Walker, you think can be a Kyrie Irving. Let's move on to... Uh, a couple guys who are going to face off this round, Chris Middleton and Al Horford. Can either of those guys be a two? We've seen Horford on some good Hawks teams. I don't think he's a two at this he's, stage he's, in his career. No, no he's, he's not a, a two. And Chris Middleton is, he was, he's a nice story. I mean, he, like, he's an all-star. If he's LeBron, an all-star. Okay, you said if LeBron gets Kemba Walker, potential contender. If yes. he gets Chris Middleton, is he oh, not a... what? Chris Middleton's a great shooter, one of the best shooters in the league. All-star this year. So was Kyle Kuzma. I mean, like, mm. Chris Middleton, and I don't want to take any, as wow. a G League guy who became an all-star, my hat is off to Chris Middleton. But is Chris Middleton going to be any better than he is right now? What's the growth? See, Tobias Harris, I think, can, can, can be better. I actually think Kemba Walker can be better. But, as a, but does Kemba fit as a two? He needs the ball all the time. High volume player in Charlotte. I know he had no number two or three. I think, uh, I think you can. I think you can play Kemba off the ball the same way. I mean, you say that about Kyrie Irving. He always needs the ball, right? I think he needs the ball in certain situations. It depends on what you have. Huh. If you have a playmaking three, then I think that Kemba Walker can be what he is and he can be very effective in that way. Yeah, it's I, not, I like all these guys. I, I, I think you're low on Chris Middleton. I, so the, so the Bucks are have the uh, I'm high on Vegas, the Chris Middleton story. They have the I'm, Vegas odds to win the East. Uh, they're the favorites to go to the finals. Chris Middleton clearly their second best oh, player. Okay, I know wait, Bledsoe's wait, wait, been good. Who's who has them as the favorites to go to the finals? Uh, the guys in the desert who have built casinos, uh, <laughs> setting lines for many many years. Uh, so so uh, okay. just to be clear, Middleton a three. So do you have him as their three, or there, is Eric Bledsoe their two now? Bledsoe has been phenomenal, first team all defense, very well. Well, this is what makes makes Milwaukee difficult and challenging is that it's a collection yeah. that is the two or the three. You know, it, it it's Chris Middleton is is the beneficiary of a very good team, and they had to pick somebody to be an all star oh, to represent boy. to wow. represent that team because they were so good. You have to have a second all star. So, but his numbers were there. Unfortunately, I don't have them in front of me. But Chris Middleton, I no, no, no. They're, I, it's I'm look, a big fan. He's a very, he's okay. a very good player. Is he a four, Rick? But I mean, but you want to just make him a no, six no, no, man? No. Let's make him Vinnie Johnson it, coming off the bench. He's he. 
I mean, he's a three. He's a three. Okay. All right, let's move on uh, to everybody's favorite free agent, Kevin Durant. Um, and this one, you know, uh, listen, you've been saying Kevin Durant to the Knicks. The world has followed you. Mm. I remain on Kevin Durant should stay island. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how we really want to frame this, but when you look at upside for Kevin Durant, longtime legacy, yes. would it mean more for him to win four straight in Golden State, where he could win four straight finals MVPs, something – Michael Jordan never did. Larry Bird, Magic, none of those guys in the modern era have won four straight. Yeah. Or would it be more beneficial for him to leave and win a title the way LeBron... Now, LeBron went home. KD would be going somewhere as a mercenary to New York or Brooklyn or the Clippers or what have you. In the minds of basketball people, staying there and winning four would be infinitely more valuable than going anyplace else and winning another one. It's just that Kevin Durant isn't looking at things in a conventional sense. Like, we're all judging it based on standard basketball legacy. Well, wait, let me talk about Who are basketball people? People who are on the league, yeah. fans, media, uh, former players. How would you want to qual- like qualify that? I, I mean, all, all of, of the it. above. Okay. Okay. All of the above. Players, GMs, executives, everybody is of the mind. Stay. I mean, look what you have. Yeah, and. I- you're, you're going to be good, and you're going to be good for a while, and you're going to, you can win more championships, and you're in, in the Bay Area. Like, what's not to like? Silicon Valley, venture capital. But KD doesn't look at it in the pure prism of, I could win four championships in a row, and nobody's ever done that, because he has ancillary things that he wants to accomplish and challenges that he wants to take on. And one of them certainly is that he wants to be, and and this is the supreme confidence that he has, build it around me. Let me go get a championship. Let me do it in a big market, a big market where I can take advantage or or pursue all of the business and outside interests that I have. He wants to conquer a lot of kingdoms saying to him, yeah, but you could, you could conquer the basketball kingdom. He's like, yeah, yeah, I could. But uh, there's like three or four other ones that okay. I want to get to, well, and uh, he's never going to conquer those. In the basketball in kingdom, State. does four straight. He's only going to be, what, 31 this fall? Yes. I mean, this would be three straight if he wins it and four if he stays, but I don't know. I put him in the Jordan-LeBron discussion if he can do four straight, especially if he continues with the finals MVPs. The stats are there. The stats are there, but the, look, nobody's, even as of right now, when you ask people, who's oh, the best gosh. player in the league right now? Everybody has to kind of think about it. Oh, not me. It's KD. I, no doubt about it. Okay. Been since he got to Golden State and destroyed LeBron head-to-head in the finals. But here's, uh, uh, then you are unique, because I think most people still look at it as KD joined a championship team. I just, for a guy who's won two finals MVPs, I've never seen a guy who's done that who's still looked at as a member yeah. of the band. Because it, he's know, not Ringo, yeah, but he's it's George just Harrison. So it's frustrating like frustrating to hear these uh, not, not not you specifically, but these dopes out there on social media. Well, he just joined him. They had lost the finals. He's won the finals MVP twice. Yes. Uh, Michael Jordan did, won nothing without Phil Jackson. Won nothing without Scottie Pippen. Okay, but I even mean, but like, even you would say to this point it's still Steph Curry's team. He still does more in this intangible way as a leader, as involving everybody. I mean, there's still the criticism this year. When it becomes too KD-centric, they're not as good. So that's what, that's the rub. And and here's the, and here's the, this is the other part when it comes to basketball. And this has been KD and this is people who know him and have been with him for a long time have told me. At his heart, the thing that he gets the most pleasure from is putting the ball in the basket is being that supreme scorer. He likes nothing more than that. In goal, with the Warriors, he's always having to share. He's always oh. having to be part of. And winning a ring as part of, as opposed to winning a ring, and you know what? I get to light everybody up whenever I want. Yeah, but Rick, we both know, listen, if he goes to New York, Life is lonely when you're passing a Frank Nilakina and whoever's left on that awful roster. I mean, that team is so bad. He's going to need Zion and Kyrie Irving you know, if he wants to win a ring in New York. You know who I am. I'm KD. 
The 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 amount of confidence he that he had with Russell Westbrook and James Harden. Against, I know they were well, young, to, against went, prime look, LeBron and Wade. They were young. They went to the finals. They had a coach who had never been there before. They were going up against a team that was out for revenge. Yeah. There were a lot of dynamics even, there. Rick, how about this? If he goes to New York. Yes. And they don't get it out of the second round because Kawhi stays or the Sixers keep their core or the Bucks add somebody, then what? That's such, then forget about Kevin Durant as a top player in the league. That's a joke. Jason, and that's that's such negative thinking. I know. I'm a positive guy. I don't like too much Chris Boussard around Rick. I, I'm start, it's starting to become negative. All right, let's know, move KD on. But KD is not looking at oh, but what if? Yeah. KD is looking at when. Yeah. Look at all the things that I could do. Hey, you get Zion and Kyrie. Yeah, I understand that. I think they can win that. But uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, finally, NBA TV ratings are down. I believe 18 percent was the number yes. I saw yesterday. Uh, it feels like an NBA Finals matchup with the Rockets and the Warriors. Rick, for the league's sake, yes. who do they want to win this series? Golden State and the same old Golden State Warriors or New Blood and the Houston Rockets? No, you have to have the Golden State yeah. Warriors. You have to have the King. You have to have Steph Curry, KD, the star power. No offense to James Harden. Chris Paul's not quite there. Chris Paul will be angry to hear this. Well, <laughs> but he's just he's not the same player. He's not on the same level. But the Warriors... The familiarity sells. The stardom sells. And the idea that you could have Warriors and the Celtics, I mean, we're looking at Toronto. Yeah. We're looking at Milwaukee. Okay, maybe. I wonder if Giannis he... brings in a, a different global I don't, feel I don't, to the game. He's not a very relatable player. He's just a, a total unicorn at, what, 6'11", with the wingspan of a, a condor. I don't think kids can relate to him the way they can Steph Curry. Yeah, and the, just he's not fully bloomed yet when it mm -hmm. comes to being able to attract people like that. But I believe the main reason that we're seeing the percentages fall off is because the NBA has become a, 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 a game where the interest is in the transactions. Yeah. <laughs> There's more interest in where KD is going to play next year and who LeBron is going to get next, next to him than there is about the actual game. No, you don't you're not Watching excited for the Warriors the Blazers Western Conference sweep? I well I Sorry, actually Dave, it might actually, be a sweep. I am because you have two home courts, you have two arenas that are awesome. But see in, I'm the, gonna, in like one little quadrant of the country. But uh, easy travel for me. Yes, yeah, easy travel for me. And you. the atmosphere is going to be phenomenal, but here's the thing. I'm going to be in those buildings. I know these guys. I know the history of these yeah. guys. So for me, I'm, I'm an outlier in that I still love watching the game. I know how much Lillard, being from Oakland, doesn't want it to be Steph Curry's town. Like, there's, there's so many dynamics there that I want to watch, and I want to watch them play out on the court. But I think the, 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 the landscape that the NBA has conquered when it comes to sports fans has been with people who play fantasy sports who don't necessarily love the game of basketball. Yeah. They love the idea the players, of making transactions. And yes, yes. I'm imagining what, imagine if it was KD and LeBron together or Jimmy Butler and Kyrie yeah. and KD got together in New York. Like the fantasy aspect of following sports is eclipsing yeah. reality. My point. wife, Rick, tried to propose a vacation the first week in July. I said, no, there's no chance. Yeah. We could have like seven superstars leave in the league. I got to be all over this. Yeah. Uh, all right, folks, for Rick Buecher, I'm Jason McIntyre. That's your NBA playoff special.